Now we're going to look at our first example, a brumination of a dose substituted aniline. The first example comes from J&J in Belgium. They dissolved the dye substituted aniline in THF water, added sodium carbonate, brought the mixture to 2 degrees. They then dosed bromine, which is outside of the vessel, so it's at room temperature, to the starting solution at 2 degrees over about 20 minutes. So the goals of this reaction and this study was to get insight into the mechanism, see what happened during the reaction, determine where the equivalent point was for the reagent, and develop a safe and scalable bromination process which would fit the cooling capacity limitations of their production reactors. So let's look at the EasyMax data from this experiment. So in green we see TR minus 2J, blue is dosing, now the purple uh, color is uh, TR and it stays pretty constant throughout the experiment. The light blue is TJ and you can see as soon as you start dosing that the TJ uh, responds immediately to get that heat out of the reactor to maintain that TR. So just looking at TR minus TJ now, we see an immediate inflection uh, for the start of the reaction as soon as dosing starts. We see it stabilize and become mostly flat so it's pretty much uh, quite a steady output of heat uh, so it's almost dosing controlled. And then we see another inflection, so we see uh, an indication of a secondary mechanism here. Then you see a sudden drop, and then we, at the end, we see a um, slight inflection uh, coming up before the end of the reaction is shown. Uh, from the RC1 data that uh, for the same experiment, there is actually some uh, uh, gas evolution, and there's also we should remember that we're running a reaction at two degrees and adding a material that's at room temperature. So. The, the last part of the TR minus TJ uh, curve here is also could be due to the heat of dosing, um, so not just the, the gas evolution. So that would require some further study. The overall heat that we see uh, at the highest point of the inflection is a delta T of about 8 degrees. So we could equate that from what we said in the past as 2 degrees being 30 watts per liter that would uh, equate to about 120 watts per litre, so which is much larger than the cooling capacity of the plant vessel in this particular example. The conclusions that we can draw from this one run, where we did not perform any sampling, we just relied upon TR minus TJ, uh, we could see the mechanism was two steps, easily see the start and end points of the reaction. We saw that the delta T of 8 Kelvin was higher than the 2 Kelvin limit that we've given ourselves for the th uh, for pl uh, limit for plant cooling of 30 watts per liter. And th therefore we couldn't, the way we've run this reaction, we could not sc uh, successfully scale this up into the plant. We'd have to either decrease dosing rate or increase reaction rate by increasing temperature. We also see where the appropriate point of sampling would be if we wanted to confirm reaction conversion. We could see from the TR-TJ profile where the, where the most appropriate place would be to take that sample.